In this video, we review and deploy Azure AD Application Proxy. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. I can't believe it's taken me this long to get around to this video. Azure AD Application Proxy is one of my favorite Azure services. Yes, I have favorites. And this is one of the first services I deployed when I was starting out with Azure. We're going to cover what Application Proxy is, how it works, and do a simple demonstration in this video. Before that, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Your support for this channel is greatly appreciated. Let's start with a problem that Azure AD Application Proxy or just App Proxy solves. Let's say you have a website in your organization. This is on the local internet, but you need to make it available to users outside of the internal network. The traditional method would be to put it in a DMZ if you have one and open up ports 80 and 443 to the internet. This would work, but you'll have to rely on the application to secure the site. And even if that's viable, the site is still open to the internet, allowing all the malicious actors to probe away at those well-known web ports. This is the problem that App Proxy can solve. A proxy acts on behalf of something else. In this case, a proxy sees a request coming in from the internet, and instead of passing that connection through, it connects to the site on behalf of that client, making the request. This has a few advantages. One of them is that we don't have to expose our website to the internet. The proxy is exposed to the internet instead. Another is we can enable authentication at the proxy. So before a request can even get through the proxy, an authentication is required. And being Azure AD app proxy, we can leverage Azure AD for the authentication, providing internal and guest users access to that site. App proxy is a cloud service, but it works with sites on your internal network. You may be wondering, how can you expose an internal endpoint without opening the site up to the internet? It uses an application proxy connector, a small application installed on a computer in your network. That makes an outbound call to the service over standard web ports. This enables the required communication between the app proxy service and the internal network. Let's take a look at what takes place when a user connects to an internal site from outside the network. When the client tries to connect, it's directed to Azure AD for authentication. Once authenticated, it gets a token. The user, along with the token, is directed to the app proxy service. From there, the request goes to the application proxy connector. The connector sends the request to the application, the application responds to the connector, and the connector passes the response to the user through the app proxy service. You can add high availability by deploying multiple app proxy connectors in your environment. There are a couple things to be aware of before you move on to the demo. First, Azure AD app proxy is available for Azure AD Premium, P1, and P2 subscribers. If you have any type of outbound SSL inspection or filters in place, there's a list of URLs that will need to be allowed and bypass SSL inspection. I'll have a link to that list below. For the example coming up, we're going to add a simple internal web page to App Proxy. This requires a computer to run the website and another to run the connector. The connector is lightweight and doesn't require dedicated hardware. I recommend keeping it on a different computer from the service that's hosting the web page or application. You'll also need an account with application administrator or higher privileges to add the service. We'll start by preparing the Windows server for the App Proxy connector. This has to be server 2012 R2 or later. If using server 19, we must disable HTTP2 protocol support for Kerberos constrained delegation for this to work. This is done by adding a registry setting. We also have to enable TLS 1.2. This also requires a registry key. After that, we download and install the connector on the connector server inside the network and verify it's registered. Next, we add the on-premises website to the app proxy and configure Azure AD authentication. Finally, we'll test to make sure it works. Let's start on the connector server to configure it for the service. Here we are on the server that we'll use for the connector service. We'll start by adding the registry key to disable HTTP2 for Kerberos constrained delegation. This is only required on server 2019. I'll include a link to this and the key we'll use in the next step in the comments below. Let's go to my documents. And we'll create a new file in documents called http2.reg. Make sure you can view the file extensions.
Let's edit the file and add the code that will create the registry key. Save the file. And we'll run it next. It'll give us a warning about the registry editor. Click yes to continue. We'll take the same steps next, but this time we'll enable TLS 1.2. Create a new file called tls.reg. We'll edit that and add the code that will update the registry settings. Save the file and run it. That step added the TLS registry keys. Restart the server once finished so the settings take effect. Once the server is restarted, log in and go to the Azure portal under Azure AD and open Application Proxy. If you see a message that the application proxy is disabled for your tenant, you can ignore that. It'll be enabled once you download and install the first connector. Also, I have two groups here. One is called test and one is default. You'll only have default if you're installing the first connector. Click download connector service. Accept the terms and run the application once downloaded. Follow the wizard to install the connector. Once finished, sign in with an account that has application administrator or higher permissions in the tenant. This has to be a native account in the tenant. It can't be a guest account. For example, it can't be a guest Gmail account. It'll take a minute or two to finish the setup. It should show it was successful. We can also view the services and verify it's running. Search for the Microsoft AAD Application Proxy Connector and Updater Service. For this lab, there's a website on one of the internal servers. We can see it here. I said it was simple. Let's go to an external computer and try to go to that page. It can't be reached because it's not available outside of the network. So let's change that. Go back to Application Proxy in the Azure AD portal. You may need to refresh, but you should see an active connector listed. To add a website, click on Configure an App. Give the app a name, Test App 01 for this example. Specify the internal URL, the URL used to access it from inside the network. It will build an external URL using the msapproxy.net domain. Copy that external URL. We'll need it for one of the steps coming up. Leave pre-authorization to Azure Active Directory. Notice there's a pass-through option. Use this if you don't want Azure AD authentication. If your application has its own authentication, for example. Leave it in the default connection group. The rest of the settings can be left as is. Click Add. Once finished, go back to your directory and go to Enterprise Applications. Search for the application we just configured, Test App 01 for this example. Open the application. Go to Assign Users and Groups. Add a user or group. This example will add a single user, but groups will work also. We'll add my user and select. Once added, click Assign to Finish. That'll give the user group rights to access the web application we just configured. We're ready to test next. Start by opening a new window. A private browser or incognito window will work best to avoid issues with cache credentials. 
Also, this test should come from outside your network. Enter the external msapproxy.net URL from earlier. Sign in with the account we added for access. If everything's correct, you should see the internal website from the external computer. That is how to configure Azure AD Proxy and add an internal website. I hope this helps you better understand what Azure AD Application Proxy is and how it can be used to securely expose internal websites outside your network. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.